Do you ever struggle with your landscape photo edits in getting your photos to reflect what you saw when you captured the scene in front of you? Well, today I'm going to share with you tips on using just five sliders in Lightroom to take your photos from blah to wow. Hi, I'm Tom Sloan. I'm a landscape and portrait photographer, and today I'm going to share with you a Lightroom editing session where I'm going to edit this photo that's over my shoulder. It's a sunrise scene that I captured at Sandbridge Beach in Virginia. So there's a lot of range of light. I shot this in RAW, and I'm going to show you how I use those five sliders in Lightroom to really um, capture the detail uh, and the range of light and contrast in the image that I saw uh, when I was capturing it. If you stick around to the end of this video, I'll share with you a bonus tip on how to use the tone control in Lightroom to um, adjust your contrast in your image. And this will really make your photos pop. So let's hop right into the edit. Okay. So we're going to hop right into the edit here. Uh, so this is the photo that we're going to be working on. Uh, this is a raw image that I took at sunrise uh, at Sandbridge Beach uh, in uh, Virginia. And this is, uh, as you can see from this image, there's it's kind of a, it's almost like a silhouette, um, the way that the, the raw image is coming out. You're not seeing a lot of detail here in the, uh, in the pier and the colors are pretty flat and that's just the nature of a raw image uh, if you have a raw image you, you really need to process it um, and uh, to to capture a lot of the detail and capture the the light that you were seeing at the time so i'm going to talk about the um, the uh, five sliders in the treatment panel over here and the five sliders that we're going to be talking about here are highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, and vibrance. And with these five sliders and the adjustments you make, that really is the base uh, upon which to base your edits. And you can only use those five sliders and you're going to find that it's going to be, make a remarkable dis difference in what your um, uh, the results you get from your landscape photography. So I want to start off with the highlights. I tend to take those down to about an 80 on all my images, um, uh, especially with skies. Uh, the highlights get kind of blown out. Um, um, so, you, you know, to, that I think that's just the, the, the start. Uh, and then for the shadows, I like to open those up once again i go about 80. you'll see some folks will take the highlights all the way down and they take the shadows all the way down all the way up uh, i tend to like to balance that and just keep them at 80 although you could you might find that you like it at um, all the way um, but i'm gonna i'm gonna keep them at minus 80 and plus 80. So you see already you're seeing more detail here in the pier. Uh, you can see some of the detail around the fishermen. I still like that, you know, uh, kind of the mystery of you can't see a lot of detail here, but, um, you know, the star of the show is really this guy at the end here and the, the sunrise um, or the sun coming up o over the horizon. Then the next thing I do is I want to find the white point of this image, and that's where you start to clip your pixels. Uh, so you don't want to go too far on the white points, but I'm going to go, what I'm doing is I'm holding down the Alt key while I'm sliding this white slider. And um, that's about right. And what do you want to do is, just where you start to see the white show up, that, that's where you start to clip your uh, pixels. So this, this one I only had to go to plus five. And then the, the blacks, I want to uh, find where the black point is, uh, where you start to show pure black 
in the image. And I like to go a little bit further. So, you know, you start to see them around minus 13. And then with the blacks, because I think it has a nice, it really, the further you go, you don't want to go too far, but I tend to see more I, more pixels that are, go straight to black because I like, kind of like that. So with those four adjustments right now, you can already see that the image is changing significantly. And the last thing I'd like to do is just um, add a little bit of vibrance. And I usually stay around between 8 and 10 just to add a little bit more uh, saturation and the, the, the difference between vibrance and saturation sliders in Lightroom, the vibrance only uh, affects those um, colors that are very muted, uh, whereas saturation will saturate every color um, in, in, in your picture. Uh, this just gives a little bit of more pop to certain colors that are, that are less um, saturated or less vibrant. Um, so that's, that's the, the basic edit here. And if you look at right now, I'm just going to do a before and after by hitting the backslash key so that you can see the comparison of what we've done. So I'm hitting the backslash key now, and you're going to see the before image. So this is the before. So you can see very um, flat image and the after. So before and after. So that's it. Um, very basic. If you, you know, get this down, this will take you less than a minute. So you, you know, any, any landscape photograph that you have, if you, especially if you have a raw image, uh, this is how I start most of my edits. Um, and if you stick around, as I suggested, I'm going to show you how to use the tone curve. In one click, you can add a little bit more contrast to your image if that's what you're looking for. And as promised, right now I'm going to hop into a little bit of editing of the uh, tone control, using that tone control in Lightroom to adjust the contrast in your image. And it, this, this change will really help uh, make your photos pop. Okay, so I'm not going to show you, as I promised, uh, there are a couple things you can do with the tone curve here. Uh, I'm going to keep this basic simple. Um, you can actually, uh, Lightroom comes with some preset um, things that you can do if you want medium contrast. It's probably going to be hard for you to see, but you can see you've got a little bit more contrast between the lights and the darks, and you can see how it changed the tone curve. Or you can even have even stronger contrast. Now, if I set that back to linear, goes across straight line. Now you can actually go in and I'll, I'll have a video uh, some other time. I'll, I'll have another video that talks about how to set the tone curve yourself. You can set points along this curve and you can bend them. Just do a simple one. You know, you can have a standard S curve. Something like this. You know, it can get a little little funky, uh, but it's kind kind of nice. You know, if you like that contrast, a lot of uh, you know difference between the lights and the darks, and you can even take this up and start to lose the blacks, go to gray. This is a common thing you'll see in pictures. You know, kind of gives a little filmic look, um, and if I turn that off. can show you what it was before. I changed the curve and after.
it's a little bit much. So I'm going to, I'm just going to go back to linear. So you can always go back to where you started. Uh, and I'm just going to give a little bit of medium contrast. So there, there you go. It's very simple. Um, Lightroom makes it easy to really uh, enrich and take your photos to the next level. So I hope you found this helpful. Yeah. If you find this video useful, then please uh, leave a comment below and don't forget to hit the like button. If you want to see more videos on photo tips, uh, that I'll be producing, hit the subscribe button. And I encourage you to use those five sliders, play around uh, to get the results that you want out of your landscape photos. And uh, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon.